top pick, still a trending topic. Daily deposit, spit facts, we don't gossip. It's some real talk, put some knowledge in your noggin. On and off the court, I run it, never see me jogging. What it do, it's your boy, Coach KK, man. We here, man, excited. First episode, we filming, man. Daily deposits, man. I'm excited, man. Just want to get it kicked off. First thing first, I want to let you guys know. I appreciate everybody here. You here watching, that mean you, you know, you tuned in, you locked in, and you showing love, man. So we appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm Coach KK, born and raised in Miami. Um, like I said, sports was something that I did at, since I was a kid, since I was about four years old. Baseball being my first sport. Got into football a little bit after that. Um, was raised by a single mom. Me and my brothers grew up, you know, moving around Miami a lot. But I really wanted to start this podcast just to create a platform for our younger generation, just the next kids coming up. You know, we didn't have a lot of guidance growing up, so we just want to be a place where you could go to, come to, and you could be, you know, have some knowledge dropped on you. So without further ado, man, first episode, season one, episode one, Daily Deposits, your boy, man. Y'all come f with us. So without further ado, man, I want to go ahead and introduce my co-host. Start with my boy on my right. What's going on, man? As far as y'all know, y'all know me as Stefan, but I'm Coach Dirt, uh, DB Coach SFE, and Miami Central. All right, you got my boy to the left. What's up, man? It's Coach OJ, liability coach at uh, Miami New Orleans, and also special teams. Follow him last, man, on the left. What's good, man? It's Coach Murph. Give me a little bit of know about myself, man. Miami guy, Liberty City guy. Like Coach say, man, I'm on daily deposits, man. Co-host, gonna be the best podcast in Miami. Just giving everybody the blood raw facts about a lot of things. Giving our opinions, man. Trying to stay on bias if possible. But you know, we gonna still show love of like where we from. You know, born and raised on Charles Hadley, an out of powder guy, a Northwestern guy. Took my talents up the the best HBCU in the world. So big shout out to Northwestern. Biggest shout out to FAMU, man. And we gonna get down to the blood raw flats, man. The nitty gritty. We gonna enjoy ourselves, man. Tune in to Daily Deposit, man. That's hey, not, to, not to cut my man's off. FAMU is not the best HBCU. <laughs> Just Let's squash that right now. Let's squash that right now. Fam, you is not the best HBCU. Uh, I let him slide the first time, but fam, you is not the best HBCU. Well, you got two rattlers up here. You know I'm a rattler. Oh, I God. die. Exactly. You heard me, fam, you. Let's go. Yes, sir. You already know it. Uh, I mean, transitioning, man. We want to get right into it, man. Here on Daily Deposits. First topic we want to talk about. We want to bring up. Um, we want to talk about any transfers. Notable guys moving around. We noticed the transfer portal been very busy this upcoming cycle. The transfer portal always busy, man. The transfer portal is one of the best and worst things that could have happened to Dade County, man. We do it like no other day in Broward County. And we even bring in Palm Beach into the situation. Texas. And even, that, and even though on 95th Street, we bring in Texas. They bring in the Texas country. in the building. God, Lee. The, the transfer portal, man. I mean, you kids, I think, I think, I think it got, it has its pros and its cons, you know. You know, man, you can go somewhere, you can play early. You can go somewhere where you didn't get a chance to play at it, and you can get the opportunity to play then. I think for, for every kid, it's a different situation. I mean, as coaches, Looking into the transfer portal, man, and it's crazy that we're talking about a transfer portal. We're talking high school. High football. school. That's fact. High school. Same even college. As coaches, I think it's a sticky situation for coaches, man, with with the, the way these kids, they can play spring ball with you. He can leave you in the fall. He can he can go to private school and transfer back to public school in the heartbeat. I mean, I think they're very lenient with it. I think there should be some restrictions here and there so that coaches are – are kind of more stable in the situation as far as their kids and their rosters, but the transfer portal, man, is different, man. I, I done benefit from it. I done had kids. I done lost kids. Yes, sir. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a fun situation to have. I know, I know, man. 
I know my man's dirty and my man's OJ got all the information on the track. <laughs> yeah, Speaking on that, man. man. Got no they, 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 nah, you got to talk about 95th. Them boys big on transfers. I ain't never got a kid. That's real. That's real. I hear that. I mean, speaking it's, it's four-year guys. It's, it's, it's four year guys. It's four-year guys. Wow. We got guys with ninth graders on our wow. on our team. But I mean, as far as um, as far as Miami Central, I, I, and I see like um kids transferring. I see I got a lot of kids from Pace. I see um got a QB from um Texas. You know, y'all get kids from all around. I mean, like last year, y'all got a couple kids. You know, every year, Miami Central does bring in good kids. I think Thanks. one of the best years was um, 2021 when they brought in the kids from um, Hollandale, the SEC Corner, the Big 12 City. Yeah, I remember. Um, I thought those were hell of a kids. Just as you being a coach at Miami Central, how, how do y'all bring those kids in and make them feel comfortable after being at another school for three years and just to come to this school Senior. to play a whole new season with a whole new group of guys like how do you make those guys feel like hey man it's family well i can't speak on like the previous years or what transpired on the transactions at miami central because this isn't just my first year there but i can speak on like just seeing how the program is ran seeing how jube operate like because you know it's a system so and you know i got i like even with me like at some point in times, like I just had to learn the system and like how he wants to operate and go about things. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, even me, like you know, I'm still learning. Like I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, watching. Like you know, his move, wanting to like you know, move like him, see what he do. Like even with the, even with rail, like even with shoot, like you feel me? Like you know, we cool. We, we dogs. We everything. We brothers. For real, for real. So I learned from all them boys. Like. And just you feel me, try to grow myself and be a mature. But I know from the coaching side and everything, like it's family, like and it, like from Jube to Coach Frank, the head uh, JV coach. You know, we all we could call one another, and anything is all love. You know, so I know we show that and we transpire that into the kids, and then the kids know, you know, because at the end of the day, all these kids know everybody from seven on sevens and playing on the parts together. So, sure, that's so they grew up together. So you right. know, so that that right there, they gonna feel the love from out the gate. So yeah. I feel like it's just you know, just knowing a kid, cause you feel me, like from pause and everything, playing on seven on seven. So I think when a kid, if a kid at whatever school that kid is that want to make that jump, oh he already know, oh I got this guy over here, cause I played with him at the park for mm-hmm. seven on seven. So gotcha. they already yeah. got the connection. So as a former player though, like I say this, you know, just being honest. You can't knock what they doing over there. You see what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't want to play for, like, a coach or staff like that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, a family like that. Because, like, I mean, right. Right. I'm not there every day. I just look at the videos. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, just, like, the, the different type of motivation, the kids around, like, I mean, I right. still, if I had a hardship, I'd go play at Central right now. Right. You know sure. what I mean? Just being real. I mean, speaking <laughs> on you, though, OJ, I mean, you know you making that jump from Westland, going to New Orleans. Facts. Talk about that transition. Um, Just the differences you see and just – you know, like you said, you're on a big stage now, being able to, you know, you got Norlin that's been real hot in the transfer portal also. So yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. Norlin and all the guys that y'all receiving. Y'all got a lot of hype surrounding the team this year. So just talk about that. Definitely. We want to hear about, we want to hear about how that transition goes because you come from a place at Westland High Leo where y'all can't get a transfer from, from, from Miami Springs. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm not going to – hold on. Being at, being at Westland, though, like our whole team, like all our starters, was like kids that transferred in. See what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So we did get transferred, but like being across the bridge, yeah. I think it's a different situation. You know what I mean? Like I said, like jokingly just playing with y'all boys, but being on that big stage, like that's a big step. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like your your coaching talents don't don't go unnoticed. You see what I'm saying? You got kids who actually, you know, want to play ball. I'm not saying the kids at Westland didn't want to play ball, but maybe they didn't grow up, you know, around that. Yeah. Like I got kids from the inner city now who want. Who want to play football? Who want to grow up and play football? Who yeah. grew up playing it? Who got a goal in mind? Who got a goal in mind? Who actually, you know, like my dream was to go to the NFL. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, it's a different motivation as far as like being a coach. Yeah. Like I approach practice with a different mindset. Like, what's new? What so I got to do? Like, what? How so can I help these like kids? The aspirations are bigger. Are bigger? Yeah. Like, 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 like I said, like even with talking with Chavis, bro. Like, I never thought that like 
I take coaching serious. Yeah. But like just being around that environment, the different coaches, you know, with with their experience and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Speaking with y'all boys, like now I take coaching to a different level. Like yo, like, now I want to get to that next level. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Talk about yeah, coaching with the kids around. You, yeah, man. like it'll the kids motivate you personally. It'll definitely make you. It, it's a definitely a difference because I started off my coaching career at Miami High, and um. It's just a different culture of kids, man. It's a different talent level. Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's a different talent level. It's a different type of motivation coming from those kids. They got a different type of mindset. So, it then again, definitely, it definitely will, will change your mindset when you come into a lot of things. When you come as far as challenges, as far as you coaching, you don't face the same challenges at every school in Dade County. Right. And, and, and the coaches around you, bro, like that changed the game of everything. Yeah, you see sure. what I'm saying, like, bro, like I, I show up to practice now. Everybody better have on a white and white shirt and black shorts. Yep. Like standard. you see what I'm saying? Like it's a different standard that like these coaches hold these kids accountable for. Yeah, like, and I want you to talk about, you know, being up under a coach like Coach Bird, because that was my high school coach at Norland and also the person that gave me my first break that actually let me, you know, give me that credibility to be a high school coach, you know. So I have much love and respect for Coach Bird. Just talk about, you know, your experiences with him so far being there. As far as like with me, you see what I'm saying? Um, like I sat down with Coach Bird, and the first thing he said was like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to help you get to college. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> yeah. I want to go to college? Like, that's mm. something I, I never thought, like, yo, okay, maybe I'll go to college. But as far as him allowing me to be myself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, listening to me, you know what I mean? Cause being that I'm probably one of the youngest coaches on the team, yeah. and he's still taking my word, it's like nothing but respect for him, you see what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, so it's like, it's different, a bunch of coaches on the team, but me being that young coach, that some of these coaches they like, man, the young boy, let's listen to him. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So like, he gave me a fair chance yeah. at a big yeah. program. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I can't knock big, him. It's bro. major respect. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, it, yeah. for sure. Transitioning topics, man. Another hot topic right now. We got, I mean, we got the firing of Coach Max at Miami Northwestern. Definitely yeah. need to speak on that, yeah. touch Coach on Max that. Max. Coach Max, <laughs> Coach Max, a, a Tuskegee alumni also. Definitely, man. Yeah, man. A Tuskegee alumni, a Jackson general. Yeah, man. Same, Just same. Coach Max. I know a, a lot of people don't know about Max, man. Max started coaching when this whole group sitting right here was in, either in diapers and, and their daddy nutsack. So, um... Max won his first championship in 98 as the DC at the West. He went on to win a state championship at Booker T in 2007. He went on to Miami Central to win four championships as a defensive coordinator. Then he went out on the limb as a head coach and won three state championships back to back at Northwestern. So he's highly decorated, big jewels on his fingers, yes, big sir. shots out to um, Max. Um, Max. A lot of people don't know Max was the longest tenured coach at Miami Northwestern. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't coach at Northwestern for a long time. Um, unfortunate that he was fired. Not too much of a probable cause. You know, just wanna just wanna put that out there, man. Max is a he's a hell of a guy, hell of a coach. Um, a lot of rumors circulating. You know, man, he got fired because of this. He got fired because of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> Max don't let the kids play seven on. He don't let the kids run track. <laughs> And I mean, you cut on the tape and, and Andy Jean is running the four by one and you cut on the tape and, and Tiger is throwing fade routes blindfolded at That's seven on seven tournaments. So <laughs> these aren't facts, you know what I'm saying? So just anybody out there just thinking, man, like this, this is what happened to Max Edwards, man, pick up the phone, give him a call. Give man. him a call. But one thing I can say, man, hey, it ain't over for him. I, 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 when he got fired, I went to him. I said, man, Max, man, what, what's next? What's the move? And he said, man, what you mean next, bird? I'm a football coach. I'm going to go coach football. <laughs> and one thing I can say to Dade County and Broward, I ain't going to drop too much knowledge on everybody, but Max is still going to continue to be a problem for Dade and Broward. I won't tell you what he'll be. He going to be a problem. He though. will be somewhere. Somewhere in Dade, and, I feel like, though. that 50 will be on your ass bone. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in Dade, though, between me and you. Not between all of you. Somewhere in Dade. I can't get that out right now. The mm -hmm. options are endless. He's going to be relevant, though. The He's going to be relevant. Endless, That's all that matters. Nine-time state champion. <laughs> multiple state championship appearance. 
The man that set the foundation at 95th Street. Facts. <laughs> Big foundation over there. So, hey, that's just... We're going to find out soon. Speaking of 95th Street, man, that's a great transition because I definitely want to get into... Um, a notable matchup that we have coming up. We just got this scheduled matchup between Chaminade and Central for September 22nd on down I'm at excited. Trash Pile. We got excited. the game on ESPN. I'm excited. What you excited for? I'm excited. Let me get your first thought. Hold on. I'm, I'm a, Hold on. Who, who, you, who you riding with? I'm excited to see. <laughs> you excited to see what? Big shots out to these guys. I'm excited to see LeWayne McCoy and Josiah yeah. Trader. Yeah. Wayne, I'm shout out Wayne. God, you know, if you, shout if out you Josiah. Out there, if you out there listening, Central coaching staff, Shamanai coaching staff, just, just for Murph, I know y'all don't know me. I'm not your friend. Let me just see some boundary work, some one on one. Those two are my favorite athletes down here in Dade County. Lewayne McCoy is a pure dog. A dog. Josiah Trader, pure dog. Those are two kids that can go power five and play on both sides of the of the field at any at any conference. Those kids are recruits at DB and receiver in the SEC, the ACC, the Big Twelve, and anywhere you want to take them. I want to see those kids. Put on the performance that hey, they need to put you on. Sp- you speak on LeWayne and uh, you say Josiah, right? Josiah. So uh, I speak. I want to speak on a kid that nobody knows about. Who that? Timothy Massey Jr., who transferred from Westland. I feel like he's gonna have a big impact on the game. A lot of people don't know who he is. What position? Why I receive him? Kimbo. See what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know who he is, but I guarantee you, one on one. It it a great young. It ain't happening. DB court. It ain't happening. I guarantee you, one on one. Whoever sticks him, which, which I say, they I gonna think, get their face eight. I think they gonna um, get their face eight. Number eight was, just I like that. Eight was because, because not only the type of he the head head in gym, bro. People don't really know about my boy. Not only just because the type of kid he is, he's he gonna get better. He gonna Facts. get better, and then on top of that, he's getting coached up by Facts. Yeah, by one of the best, the best receiver coach like down here. Like you feel what I'm saying? Shout out to Shoe, boy. Like, and that's just, I mean, it ain't no secret. To like what shoot putting out, like how many power five receivers he's got, you know, scoring seven touchdowns, receiving touchdowns on Definitely. Nolan last year. Hey, bro, hey. hey he scored seven year. receiving touchdowns? Seven receiving touchdowns on Nolan. You say yeah, last year. Y'all huh? couldn't run a ball. Y'all couldn't run a damn ball. I'm going to have 20 yards. I mean, hey, listen, I'm just here to delay facts. Hey, man, I ain't, I ain't no Viking, bro, man. You shoot the best. I ain't no Viking. You shooting out. The boy said talk to him nice or not you, at all. You, you shooting out numbers and you, you, you bypassing. The, the the Florida leaders in 2021 in touchdowns, and <laughs> yards. Who that? When the West. I had, when I had the very Jenkins ca- ca- catching for 100 a game. You said. Oh, God, you said 2021. You said 2021. 2021. But y'all just said something about last year too, though. Now yeah, I'm talking about this season that just passed. Yeah, we talking about last year. This season. We but we talking about Sherman and Sin that play this year. We talking about talking the ones that's relevant right now. Yeah, for sure. The ones who gonna make a difference. Right. The ones who we gonna go. Sit down and watch. You're going to be at the game, coach, but I'm going to be there front and center watching the game. So, I mean, Dirt, I want to get your your response, man, your immediate reaction to Chaminade versus Central, being a coach. I know you're ready for that. It's going to be on ESPN, man. It's going to be one of the biggest games in Florida history, honestly. Two teams that's going to be ranked in the top ten in the country going head-to-head at Trash Power Stadium. Tell me your thoughts on it, your immediate thoughts on that matchup. Football versus a seven on seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> who the seven on seventeen? You know who's the seven on seventeen. I really don't know because, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you. I really don't know too much about Shamanad. You seven. know what I mean? But I mean, I'm rocking with Scent. That's just I mean, what it is with like, me. This is football, bro. It's eleven on eleven. You feel what I'm saying? I know what our trenches. I know our trenches is better than theirs. Like I'm going to rock with what I know. And what I and what I do know is is that you feel me, if the game is gonna come, it's already here. You know, I already did all my talking, I already did all my back and forth with everybody on Shamanad. <laughs> so you feel me? So right now, I'm just waiting until that time comes. And when that time comes So essentially that game comes down to the trenches. The yeah, trenches. That's what he's saying. Yeah. So 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 the number one receiver in the nation has no, no say so on, on that, that ball game, game because that game <laughs> comes down to the trenches. It comes down to trenches, meat and potatoes. Dade County football has been known, like, 
I'm not. I, but, but, no, but listen, listen. But you I, can't, I, I cannot recall the last time. I can't name five old linemen in the last, we don't, say, two years that left here and went to the ACC and the SEC. But you right. can't say that. You can't yeah, overlook that the, 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 yes. the churches, though. In Dane County, let's be honest. Because honestly, that's how you win. Two and get that ball out your hand. If he pressing you too? If he pressing you. Yeah, you got somebody over the top? Sent just had a guy that went ACC. Uh, went Florida State. Got his name for it. But I know he is. I said the last two years. I mean, yeah, it was last year. Hey, oh, I'm not talking about you talking about the kid y'all took from Luke, the six six kid, the Addison kid. Uh, no, I, I just <laughs> I did have a son go to Florida just, State. Are oh, you talking about Coach Poole's son? I know he at Florida State. I know he oh, Coach Poole's son at Florida State. Yeah, yeah, Florida State. Rich, that's all that's right. Rich. Yeah, shout out Coach Poole. Florida State. Yeah, yeah. When they played against Merritt Island, we gotta start as a rock. You go on FloridaState.com, Seminoles.com. Look at the roster. Say Miami Central. That's who Miami he played Central for. Next to his name. So be clear. Say he played for Central. Don't be like he's a Central alum. Back back to this matchup though, man. I wanna I wanna <laughs> I wanna I wanna stay on topic about this matchup, this Central Shamanad, and let's get our sentiments and our thoughts out on this. I mean, for myself, this is my first year being a, a coach at Shamanad. I'm a co receiver coach along with Coach G. Um, we out there. I wanna, you know, talk about something that someone suggested from Facebook. Um, just the topic of the importance of or the lack of importance of running track and how that relates to being an athlete do you think that is something where it's required where you need to run track in order to be the best athlete that you can be or do you feel like track isn't a necessity i want to start with you dirt kick it off to you i mean i feel like me personally track is not a ne- track is not a necessity it's just an opportunity probably just for a kid to like work on his speed mm-hmm. i don't normally think a kid like because at the end of the day these kids want to play football yeah these kids want to go to the league like how many how many skilled guys that could say that was that was like real track stars in the nfl though you feel what i'm saying so when you go to looking at that number on the on all in every position like you feel what i'm saying most of these guys don't even play track don't even run track so they probably run it in high school but Okay, it's like for a guy like I know, like Sammy Watkins. I know Sammy Watkins was a real track guy coming out of uh, South, uh, Fort Myers. You feel what I'm saying? When he went to Clemson, you think he ran track like that? Mm-hmm. Not really. So I'm saying, like, you, you make that decision when you go when you go to that next level, like, yo, because like you get real focused, like, yo, at some point you gotta like make you gotta pick and choose on like you know what you gotta do. You feel I what think, I'm saying? I the think importance. South Florida's just misconstrued. Go ahead. Like yeah. you, you miss your schools as far as like you gotta run track I to think be they, fast. They make it say, oh, you have to run track. Yeah, like it's then the end all be all. They try to downplay. So, cause cause we talking about kids, mm-hmm. and, and kids don't make their own decisions. Parents make Parents decisions. Do. I pay for it. I pay where you go. I buy the shoes. I buy the cleats. So mm-hmm. you do what I'm asking you to do. So parents kind of get kind of are getting forced into the situation like, oh, they getting downplayed. Oh, you have to put your kid in two sport. He got to be a two football all year. This and that. Like they, they downplaying down the that's parents. That's down here, or yes, in South Florida, okay. thinking it's been it's becoming a toxic situation. So every parent, oh, you got to put your kid in track. But then it's like, yeah, your kid ran track all Optimus, and he ran track his whole high school. And then you mad at the coach? Hey, coach, man, my kid ain't got no offers, man. Why, why, why Georgia don't want him? Why Alabama don't want him? Cause Alabama, like, yeah, man, your kid good, and he can run sideline to sideline. Let's just example. Your kid a DN, he a D tackle, he a Mike, he a Will, he a he a, he a Sam, and you like, yeah, boy, my, my kid, boy, he a backup, boy, he can run a four four right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he like, yeah, your kid run a four four. Man, he about one seventy four. I knew you was going up. From Georgia, mm. who six run a four, two. he run a four eight. But he finna hit this guard in the mouth the whole Facts. inside run. Yeah. Like, your kid ain't going to make it through. So, I just think it's a certain decision from everybody. I just think at this point, parents are getting forced into, oh, yeah. So, everybody saying, oh, two-sport athlete, two-sport athlete. Oh, he got to run track and play football. But they just saying two-sport, two-sport. So, so as why a y'all par- not as putting a- y'all kids in lacrosse? Yeah. But as why a parent, why? though, I feel like, you know, growing up, like, I want my kid to try everything. You see what I'm saying? But as a football coach, now I see that. The importance of track, it has its pros and its cons. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Like, if you're a ninth and tenth grader, you need to be in the weight room every day, like yep. during the springtime. That's you see true. what I'm saying? You need to be be out there in the spring learning. Just the developing football. your especially, body, especially if you're gonna be there at that school for the remainder of your high school career. 
then you I, need to be there. I but then your junior year, then you, 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 you could possibly run, run track. You see I what I'm saying? People get it misconstrued and they be like, they, they show you this tape and they be like, hey, he ran track. Like he's yeah, a track guy. Like yeah. he's naturally fast. He yeah. should be running track. track yeah. So, I mean, to, to play devil advocate here, I would say um, I feel like running track, it could do no harm for you. So it can only help you it can only make you a better athlete because what are you doing when you're playing football when you're playing baseball when you're playing basketball you're running so not to say that you yeah, I see what you're saying but speed. if you're not competing you, though and it, like it has a pro and a con in every so situation. so with this specific topic i want to touch on the fact that you know the parents on facebook were saying things like kids running all the kids feel like they need to run a hundred meter dash 200 meter dash when it's like that may not be your race so it's not like them saying like track isn't the best thing for them it's like you're doing. You're just putting your kid into the hundred meter track event People just, just to get think, them oh, ready. I'm gonna put my kid in track, and it's gonna make him a better athlete. athlete. You go lift you weights, you be a better, strong, get faster. What That's what I'm saying. You saying you can't get just get faster by faster. running. You putting them in track. I can, I can play devil's advocate and say, hey, you taking a short route. Go put him in somebody's speed camp. Go spend exactly. five hundred dollars a month That's and let right. his, let his ten yard burst get faster. That's like exactly. This you football go. Football isn't played. On the hundred meters running straight in a straight, straight line. line. Football yeah. is played starting and stopping for four to six seconds. Okay. But what about the combine? That's the, the, what I'm about the the actual so like test. You go to train, they, them, them boys not going to run track. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They they going to learn how to run how to a run 40. A 40. They, you see what I'm saying? And that's it. And after that, you being taught how to mm -hmm. run cone to cone. How you open up? So you saying you, you prepare, learn, you, you, you really prepare for the drive. You, you learning you the technique the drive, of it. Yeah. So you yeah. only you're, you're learning how to run the forty. Yeah, you're only you're practicing that's forty it. yards, and that's it. And once that drive is over, be a help to the forty yard dash. But, but track runners track though. has pros and cons everywhere. I'll give you the story. Um, I want to say freshman year. Um, my boy, my boy Artie Burns, he running track. Yes, sir. He's, He's a, a hurdler, hurdler, right? Hurdler, best hurdler. Yes, All sir. All everything in high school. People mm -hmm. look and say, "Oh yeah," you know what I'm saying. Never forget the story. I'm sitting next to him. Um, he just had won a 60 meter hurdle at the indoor meet. Spring football was coming up. I'm not very good with the track dates, but I want to say it was spring football transitioning into another season. Al Golden came to me. Al Golden was like, hey, man, you're going to be a first round pick. But you're not going to be a first round pick. He say, you about, you about 190 right now. They want the first round pick at Kona to be about 197. You feel me? Between 197, 205, that can run about a 4-4. Four, four. You already long, you lengthy, you 6'1. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do that. He like, man, you've been running track. We keeping track of your weight, and man, you done lost six pounds. And I will never forget, he showed me the back. They was like, stop shit. Like, stop shit and, and stop running track. Or you gonna be a first round pick. That's no it. bullshit. And bro, did like, what? He like you, you using the bathroom too much so you're eating the wrong things you're losing uh, that weight and he like you're on that track every day and you're not gaining okay, weight yeah. and he like you're not going to be a first round pick and i never forget the nike team in texas the i want to say adidas team i forgot the state and it was one t a, a new balance team had told him hey man lead the university of miami come run track for us in nike all you got is two hours of practice a day you're gonna practice every day we're gonna pay you you're gonna get endorsements you running for Nike, you'll never play for Clemson anymore. And I go to like, hey, you, go, you want the first round money or, or you want that? Pick it. Simple as that. And that's why I feel like like track and football comes in. It's pros and it's cons. It's pros and it's cons. Right. Right then and but would Artie have been the same athlete without track? He's been I running track all his life, though. But he been I track believe all his life. Since that mommy does. I think people <laughs> get the misconception. We play with him. He yeah. was a track guy that Before, transitioned to football. to football. Yeah, because all he knew how to do is get open and go. Trans, transition to football, football to, to track. track guy. And that, he was tracking. So you saying yeah. if you're a track guy, it's good to, 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 to go play other sports because you already got that track form. But if you're playing football, it don't make sense to leave what you're playing to try to go do another I sport. Say that. But how I said is like I think it's more harder though. If you ain't, if, bro, if, to me, if you ain't competing and if that ain't your main thing. I ain't wasting my time doing it. You see what I'm saying? At least not like my most like important year. In high school, know who you are. Know who you what are you because do. you at that age where you know what's going on. And I wish somebody had told me those type of things. Like, know who you are. Like, like if you're a receiver that's about 5'9", you got good routes, you got good hands. Be Julian Edelman. There's no college recruiter that's just like, you You run a 4'8", 
there's no college recruiter like, man, I'm recruiting that kid to run that deep post that I've been drawing up mm. in my office. That I want that kid to run that go route. Nah, you're running that deep. Run like, <laughs> so I tell kids, like, like, you might not need the track. Like, go to the speed coach, get your 20 yards fast. You know what That's I'm saying? It. It's different places to get faster. I think South Florida has, has kind of just locked in on track is the only place where I can, can get, get faster, faster. Yeah. Instead when, when, in the weight room. weight room, power clean. Power clean. Or single leg squat. Squ- I'm exactly. getting faster in the weight You're room. You're fast. more muscles. explosive. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, Eating running, right. the, running, the eight, running the 800 is not going to make Kirby Smart offer you to play DB. Yeah. I hear that. He's not looking for a long winded corner. Yeah. Me personally, I'm I'm gonna just go down and we gonna agree to disagree because I feel like you, like, running track could do nothing but benefit you playing football. Like, it cannot hurt you. So that time that you're putting in, that you're training for track, you're still training. So regardless of what you're saying, that you're not specifically training to to develop your skills in that position that you're playing, you're still developing a for skill sure. as far as running and for getting sure. faster. And before so. we before we switch subjects. I'm going to say this, right? Where do kids get their most offers at? What season? Are college coaches available to come in the get spring. kids offers? In the spring. In the spring. When, 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 when Kirby Smart and Nick Saban and um, my man's must champ, and we can name all the coaches. They coming to see Sanders, you on the field in the spring, like, not on the track. Is he, is he coming out there to see you pass a baton, or is he looking for a corner that can cover is he walking out to the football field or he going to the track to go yeah. see you? I would say if you're that guy, wherever you at, they coming. If but listen, that that's guy. like, that's you're like that guy. If it was so a you, tip, we'll all be drunk. But <laughs> if you're that guy, shit, track it like a dude like Jeremiah Smith. So you going to go he's to running run track. track instead of play spring football? He is running track. So, and when he's done he's with great track, great he's, he's going to come to spring. He's yeah. a prime example of who's looking great on the track. And I look, I, I'm not sure, and I could be wrong, and I want somebody to say, shut up, like, I'm going to tell you, Shelly, go ahead. I watched ahead. the number one receiver in the nation last year, Brandon Ennis. Yeah, the they two totally different players. I didn't. I didn't. I can't recall him winning the 200-meter dash. I'm sorry. But I they two totally different players. They're two totally, like you said, Brandon Hakeem. Ennis is a, a slot receiver. Somebody Hakeem, that's going to. Hakeem ain't put run track. Hakeem, was Hakeem played side basketball, side. though. He actually won the state championship in basketball, he did he not? Though. But that's a different sport. Regardless, track is a, it's a, you, we're talking about playing two different sports. Yeah, but we're talking about track. So, but we're talking about track. I taking you away that. from playing football, developing your the, skills. The whole thing, just let's be a thousand percent honest with mm-hmm. the athletes you're talking to or with the parents you're talking to on track. I think, like, everybody just, man, I want this kid on my track because of his name, because mm-hmm. of who he is. Yeah. He'll bring attention. Tell this kid, is track the best thing for you? Like, Can yeah, track you help get, you get in college? Like, like yeah, you're going to get What's going to help you? Like, yeah, like, let, like, let me give you, let me put you in a best case scenario. Yeah. Because track coaches don't offer, they don't offer you because you got first place in the Louis Bean. Yeah. Like, they can care less who got first, who got second. Mm. All they doing is hitting sort on a computer, and the time's coming up. They ain't gotta fly to the New York. Yeah. Nobody they tell it. They tell it. They tell them kids on, you gotta run a certain time to a get a time. Florida, they take, yeah, they on, take on time. Florida, whatever the, the the times come in the phone, he run a he run a ten eight, he run a ten five, he run a ten two. We ain't even gotta go to uh, Miami this week. Let's go to Texas to go see this four by one because the time already there. Yeah, I hear that. I mean, so with that, I think we could leave that right there. Put a pin in that topic Tracking and transition. It. Jay, go play football. Nah. <laughs> it's spring football, kid. You need, to be, you, need to, you need to be on the field in the spring. Hey, learn, learn the system. Like that, learn the plays. Get bigger like faster. Learn how to run. I feel like that hurt your rankings, too. <laughs> Man, we're going to put a pin in that topic, though. We're going to put a pin in that topic, and we're going to transition. And I want to follow up with a question that we've seen on Facebook also, um, talking about the transition from being a player and to becoming a coach. So the things that are different, you know, the aspects of that as far as you know, when you've been a player, everything is up to you. Like, you're out there making the plays. It's up to your work ethic, how much work you put in. As far as being a coach, our main job is to motivate, help guide these young kids, um, try to steer them in the right direction. Um, but we can't play for them. So it's a lot of things that I would say, like, for myself, I was the type of player that I go, I don't have a problem going across the middle, running deep post, getting killed by the safety. Knowing before the play, I'm going to get hit by the safety. But a lot of these kids, you know, you will see somebody else run that same route, and they'll get the alligator arms. It's like, hey, ain't right. I can't. I'm gonna play pure devil's advocate in that. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm gonna play pure. I think that's one of the biggest problems with coaches. 
that make the transition from a player to a coach. Go expecting ahead. you to be that kid. me. And yeah. that's something you're I learned too. Me. You're never going to be me. You're not going to be your parent. Yeah. You're going to be who you are. So when I look at a kid and I coach a kid, I'm never saying, boy, boy, I would have grabbed that. Yeah. Boy, I would have made that block. Boy, I would have I would have caught that. Boy, I would have made that tackle. You not me. I have to make you comfortable as a player. So that I you can feed, make that I got to feed this game into you so that you can be it. So you can be mm-hmm. comfortable within yourself to make whatever play it is needed to be made. And I can't, I cannot, like, that's a big problem for me. That irks my nerve to hear a coach tell a kid, boy, y'all, y'all jet soft these days, boy. When back in the day, boy, I was doing hamburger drill for 10 hours. Like, that's not him, coach. And it's never going to be him. Like, like, you going to I mean, that's the not, game? That's not, how the, that's not how the game played him, today. You, <laughs> sit down. you can't even do hamburger like, drill. You want him to be you? Because you can't suit up no more, coach. And what you did back then when you did it, it doesn't matter anymore. Like I, 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 I hear coaches like <laughs> New coaches, day coaches, coaches, they, they, they super angry with me. Like, like I say, man, I, I um, a coach I had a coach on. Boy, I caught, I caught, I caught this many passes at my school. How many passes you caught at FAMU? And like we off, we arguing as coaches. I'm like, does that matter? Like, That's funny you say that, bro. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking to somebody today who went to school with me, and he like, damn, boy, you uh, you don't go back up there, like you know, just. Check it out and talk. And I'm like, bro, at the end of the day, what I did don't even matter no more. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, if I ain't make it to that big level yeah. where I spent years there, that don't matter. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, all that just went to vanish. It is what it is now. You see I what mean, I'm saying? So, like. Yeah, I mean, but back, was the, 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 the question at hand was the transition from being a player, being to, a player a coach. to a coach. I mean, I think that is the hardest part. That's the, to me. That's my opinion. The hardest part about transitioning from a player to a coach is understanding that your players aren't you. Mm-hmm. They ain't built like you. They didn't grow up how you grew up. They're not expected to be you. So. They are a reflection of your coaching, and that's it. Yeah. Like, let those kids play. They can't live through you, and they can't do what you did, and don't expect them to do what you did. Just have rate your expectations or the way you coach them. But, Dirt, I want to get your sentiments on this. So – at first, in the very beginning, you know, I ain't really want to coach. Yeah. You know, because, like, bro, like, once, like, you know, like, we used to and like, everything was over with, bro, I was just about, man, just working. Like, you feel what I'm saying? For sure. But, so, you know, I knew. Keep it a buck, man. I motivated you to coach, bro. I mean. <laughs> he saw Murph out there. He wanted to, he like, Yo, he wanted to go to the check in. Cold yeah, Murph. He see, he see Murph out there running it up. Nah. I ain't gonna lie, what really like what really kicked like it that? in for me though. <laughs> no, nah, what really no nah, what really kicked it in for me, like with coaching, my boy Drico. Like Drico. um we, I played with him at UCF. He was a senior, I was, he was a senior when I first checked in. So um he got he got some of the guys up there with like, you know, he worked with a lot of top DBs up there in the Orlando area. So like, you know, all them just with like twenty four K, you know the little seven on? With them jets, oh, yeah, and, like twenty four K, twenty four K, yeah. So and he also worked with like other DBs from like other uh, other seven ons and, sh- and stuff like that. So you feel me? Like he, him, and T Fish. Really, I sat down with T Fish, my corner coach. He at Syracuse right now, and last and like like probably around last year around this time, he was like, "Yo, like man, like don't look at it about what it could do for you. Look at it what it could like what it could bring towards you. Like you feel what I'm saying, like." You learned all that at UCF or then at the JUCO at ASA. Like, we learned all that for what? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, so, so as of right now, what, what, what route you taking in, in coaching? Like, what, what's, what's the end goal for you with coaching? Man, just after going to my first convention, my Nike convention, like, just hearing all those great football minds speak, bro, and like, Hearing us talking the same language, building those relationships, those connections with dumb, b- different people, bro. But like, I, I, I it opened my eyes. Like, yo, like, I could really like go far in this, you know. Definitely. Shit, I want to go all. The, I want to go to the to the highest to the highest level. Like, man, guys, will coach like in the league. So, so, you think you would leave? Would you leave Miami Central? Yeah. To 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 elevate or to or elevate? Do what you're going? Facts. Not Facts. to elevate. I so I, so if if the West said come be the DB coach right now, you'll go. If the West said come be the DB coach, like the head DB coach. Head DB coach. 
Don't do it. He ain't it. going. He ain't going. I ain't going. He ain't going. What about what about Westline? <laughs> nah, bro. Like, he ain't doing it. Nah, he ain't doing it. Turn me that, up. That's that's why my my, up, my, my, right my, my story different as far as like transitioning it from a player to a coach because it's like I went to a school that nobody know about. Tuskegee? Said, no, I'm talking oh. about Westland as far as oh, coaching. Westland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, like, me me walking out there, it was like, damn, I got to learn, like, these different personalities of all these kids. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that was probably, like, the hardest thing as far as, like, me taking that step as, like, being a coach. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Because, like, of course, I'm going to work hard. Yeah. But now I got to instill it in these kids. to like, 100%. yo, you got to work hard. You got to watch film. You got to eat right. You got to be go to sleep at night. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, like, the steps I took as far as, like, when I was a player, like, I'm trying to instill it in these kids so they can make the right decision as far as, like, what I possibly did. Not saying that all the decisions I made was right. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm trying to teach these kids as far as, like, yo, but you got to do the right the, thing. The goal for you at Westland was always to elevate. I remember I remember last spring you coming in, you interviewing, interviewing with Max. Max you facts. like, man, hey, man, Max, man, I know you a D.C., but, man, I want to be a D.C. Right. That's all I'm agreeing on. I'm just saying as coaches, as young coaches, we in our 20s. Um, a lot of us don't have a wife, don't have a kids, man. Yeah. You able to travel right now, man. Like, like a school call you, you can go elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? Give yourself sure. the opportunity. You don't All I'm saying yourself. as coaches, don't get caught up in I'm here for winning. You know what I'm saying? When you could go somewhere else, and get a and, name, and build, you might build, be a loser. You might be a loser, but you learn how to control your room. You learn how to coach kids. You learn how your own methods. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As an assistant coach. You report to the coordinator. The coordinator reports to the head coach. So you already in the system. Give yourself an opportunity to run your own system. Yes, sir. Give yourself an opportunity to just grow. So that's just my message to young coaches, man. Just always have your resume on somebody's table because you never know what you can get caught up in. You never know what can happen. Put yourself what, out there. What the AD might think in the morning. So you always want to have your options open. And that's something. And I'm telling y'all from experience, I mean, I – just off experience, I mean, we we lost to Jess within the state semifinals, 2021. So I'm sitting back and I'm like, man, I'm gonna take a week off, man. I'm finna call Andy and Punch, man. We finna get back on this field. We finna work, man. We finna we gotta go back to state. And, and the rest of the staff, like, like, oh, um, yeah, Murph, I'm gonna be out there in another week, man. I got an interview at X, Y, and Z. And mm-hmm. the other coach, like, oh yeah, I'm interviewing for the head coaching job at North Miami. Then I'll be out there. And my other coach like, oh, yeah, I'm interviewing that pace to be the head coach. I'm be, And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, damn. Like, about I thought it. we was locked in Northwestern for life. We like, hell, yeah, we locked in Northwestern for life. But I got to give myself that opportunity to elevate, to go to go elsewhere. 100%. So that's all I'm saying. We wanna, always want to wanna keep those options open to elevate. Definitely, man. All the coaches out there, definitely, man, you want to try to create opportunities for yourself so just like this podcast this was this started as a thought something i just wanted to do i wanted to you know i had a crazy idea i could get a coach from central i get a coach from the west i get a coach from norland we could come on stage and we can do something for the kids and that started as a thought but I, it was something where i was like i dreamed about that like every day man it's just like i feel like this is big for somebody like me to to follow through with something that i wanted to do so i feel like that could be a lesson for everybody like Trace your dreams, man. Don't give up. It's all about writing it down, getting it down on a piece of paper, and actually putting plan behind your work. Um, but moving on, man, I want to get our, our final, you know, sentiments on anything we want to say before I get to this um, trivia question that I got that I know nobody going to get the answer to. I just want everybody to, you know, show that y'all going to be, y'all don't know everything. Go shoot. Shoot. Y'all I, ready? I, got a, I got a quote. Go ahead. Do your thing. <laughs> what was the quote? What was the quote earlier that you said? Oh, what Drew said? No, not that, bro. The one you said about uh, sometimes people you don't know show more love. Oh, yeah. That really? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, tell them. sometimes <laughs> even strangers show no, you the love. most love. Nah, that ain't what you see. You got to say it right, yeah, bro. Yeah, you yeah, tripping. That's what I said. Nah, you ain't saying it I said sometimes <laughs> even strangers shows the most love than the motherfuckers that knows you. Right. Look. Get your game on. Nah, shit. I hear that. But um, all right, to this question, man, I want to see if we know who was last year's 1A state champion. Who in won in, in football? Florida Shamanai. football, 1A. Shamanai. Shamanai. 1A. 1A. 
one eight. I bet it's either the one M, two M, three M. Like, that was not like this that. year. Last that was last year. year. Last, oh, no, year. last year. My bad. You right. Last year, twenty twenty one. So y'all got twenty twenty one. Was, was no, y'all wrong. So that's y'all. That's y'all final answer. Well, Shamanai. Oh no. Shamanai. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I only watch four four through eight. The four rest of eight. it is is park ball. Huh? <laughs> I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 bro. I watch they, they're a South Florida, I watch Florida team. team. No, they're not a South Florida oh, team. They're not a South Florida team. Who won 1-8 State? That game that they probably played Wednesday at 3 one eight State, yes, sir. I don't know. Uh, Where you get this yo. question from, though? Like, I got it off of the, the, the FHSAA oh, website. All right, let me, get, let me get my options in. 1-8 right. State Championship. Last Where year. It wasn't Florida High. Was it Florida High? No. You said they not a they not a um they not a South Florida team. South Florida it wasn't it wasn't Florida High. So what? Is, it wasn't um. All right, give me a city. They are in. No, nah, I can't give you the city because that's that's the only thing that the school what is a damn city. Uli? Huh? It's Uli? No. Hell no. I thought you was right. Oh, that was a hell of a guess. All right, man, y'all come on, man. Guess. I know, bro. I'm hey, I know my dog got. Twenty twenty one. One state eight. champion. They, they, so they're in Central Florida area. Football, yeah, I think they're in Central Florida. I honestly right. don't know where it's at, bro. I don't know one A, man. Yeah, I, all right. Hey, y'all got no y'all got five seconds. Nobody five. Yeah, nobody four. Know that. I don't know, yeah, ain't nobody. All right. So the, the one M, I mean one A state champion, in 2021 was Madison County Cowboys. Madison County. I was That's thinking Madison County, Madison County, but I thought they Madison, Madison County. County. <laughs> uh, Ma- Madison <laughs> County, right up there by Tally, man. My safety and college play for Madison County. You just said it wasn't County. in Florida, ain't that so, ain't that so, No, it's in Florida. Oh, it's Florida. Florida. State. No, Madison. Madison County is big school. Burgundy school. Burgundy ain't um Burgundy ain't feel me. Big school. Yeah, oh, you do that because because of, of family? Nah, I ain't. <laughs> nah, Madison County. My boy, my boy Guyton play for Madison County. I thought they had lost though. All right, man, but definitely, man, we want to. Thank everybody for tuning in to our first episode of Daily Deposits, man. I want to leave y'all with something. Just players, man, if you at home, man, I want you to make sure that you tell your mom you love her today. If you see your mama, if you in the room next to her, go give her a kiss. Go give her a hug. Go give your guardian a hug. Let them know you love them. Make sure they know how you feel about them, man. I want to tell my mom I love you. Happy birthday to my Auntie Tracy. Y'all got some shout-outs, anything hey, mom, y'all want to say? I love say? you, too. I'm going to just, I'm going to just end off on, man, be great, man, do, do what's best for you. Yes, sir. I never, talking to the kids out there, to the high school kids out there, do what's best for you, man, don't, don't follow every trend, don't, don't, don't shake every hand you see, man, don't be everybody's friend you see, remember when Ray met Claude, (laughs) got life in prison, man, (laughs) hey. (laughs) <laughs> hey, hey, trust me when I tell you this, man. Just, just fight. do, just do you, man. Crazy, dog. I tell my kids all the time. I never seen a bunk bed casket. I never seen a, a double seat casket. In fact, I never seen a multiple person casket. Just all I want to say. So, you the only one that gotta be in there. Your decisions that lead you there earlier, yeah, 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 and other decisions can can make that. A beautiful day, a celebration, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, make the decisions that's best for you, man. Last thing, kids, make the best decision for you. Uh, make sure it's the right situation. And always remember, it ain't always about football. Make sure y'all get them grades right. You know what I mean? Get a degree. That's the main goal. Uh, get that try to tell degree. Kids. Yes, sir. Try to degree. Get degree. That get that degree. Get them Finish off. Try that to that go degree, to school. It's going to open up way right. more doors for you than you uh, can imagine. Yes, sir. I'm just, you feel me? I need to discreet, baby. You know? Rock block. You feel me? National <laughs> champs. You feel me? National I'm just, it's just attached. It's just attached to me, like. Okay. You, yeah. You Last thing, we Shoot, we ends. up. Y'all up you next. Shoot them up next, right? Oh, we got Larry Booster oh, Larry, coming in tomorrow. We got Larry, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Larry Booster coming in tomorrow. Good. Hey, nah, but I wanted to, for real, for real, before we get, get all and start going crazy, I want to thank all of you know, co-hosts for being here. I intentionally picked these three gentlemen to sit next to me on this stage and to talk and debate topics because, um, first of all, I've had a personal interaction with each one of these guys and I got to know them. Um, we've had interactions where they have shown me their character, they show me who they are, and I'm big on loyalty, big on just having the right people around me. And 
I definitely want to, you know, just tell them boys how much I appreciate y'all for coming out, sitting on here with me, man. I, I know this going to be a beautiful thing, man, for Miami, for South Florida, man. For real. And with that being said, all right, this Daily Deposit is our first episode of Crib Talk, man. We want to thank you for watching. We need you to like, comment, and subscribe. You heard me? This will put right inside my city, yeah. <laughs>